In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the pixelated Photoshop action. This here is a photo I'll use in the tutorial. I'm going to play the action and we're going to recreate this. So if I zoom in a bit here, um, you can see that the action breaks apart your photo into all these different sized squares. And you can choose from a few different directions. You've got left, right, up, down, middle, or one called build yourself, where after you play the action, the, the um, the parts haven't moved at all, so it gives you the opportunity to manually place them where you want. Uh, I'll show you how that all works uh, a bit later on in the tutorial, but I'll just click through some more examples here. So there's the uh, right direction. That's the down direction. Uh, again, there's another down direction. Lastly, this one to so that, and I just added a bit of a blue glow um, in a few different areas. Okay, I'll close these down and show you how all this works. Alright, so here we have uh, our photo, and uh, a few things we we're going to check off before we run the action just to make sure your Photoshop file is set up uh, well. So if you look into the layer panel, your photo layer should look identical to this, should have that background text and lock symbol. Uh, if it doesn't, you need to follow these steps, so I'm just going to just delete that. So, for example, if you open up your photo and you can't see the background text with lock symbol, go to Layer, New, Background from Layer, and it will set as a background. So you only need to do that step if it doesn't look like this at the moment. Alright, still in the layer panel, go to the top right hand corner icon, go to Panel Options, down the bottom, add copy to copy layers and groups. Hit OK. Uh, next, go to image mode. Make sure you're in RGB color mode and 8 bits of channel is selected. And as usual with uh, all my photo effects, try to use a high res photo. You can see mine 1700 by 3000. Uh, photos in the, in the range of 2500 to 4000 will always um, create the best um, or the sharpest looking effects, most detailed, so keep that in mind. Okay, I'll cancel that. So what I need to do now is create a new layer, so go layer, new layer, and this must be called brush, all lowercase. Click OK. So with the brush layer selected, we need to um, trace around our subject or brush onto our subject and that's going to be uh, the area where all the particles are going to emit from. So, um, and what I like to do with this action is highlight um, all of my subject to create as many particles as possible because that way uh, we can always erase some particles after the action's finished if you don't want them. Uh, but, so for example, if I just hit B on the keyboard, um, let's grab a red rush, doesn't matter. Um, you could do it a few ways. Like if I just wanted to um, shoot particles out to the right in that area, you could brush it just there and click play on the action. Uh, but what I want to do is create a lot of particles. So I'm going to trace over uh, the entire photo. I'm going to try and do this as quick as I can. Um, I'm going to grab the magnetic lasso tool and just quickly draw around my subject. It's not going to be perfect. Okay, hit enter. Okay, I need to fix up that bit in the middle there. So if I just hit um, Alt Delete or Option Delete on a Mac, I can fill that selection with my foreground color, which is red. Um, I'm just going to bring down the capacitance to zero, and I want to fix up this area in here. Just want to trace around here. Okay, I'm just going to bring this up and delete that. All right, so. Trace around my subject, so these particles are going to emit from everywhere. That's what I want. I want a lot of those squares. Um, next, what I might actually do is I want, because I'm going to play this action and have all the particles shoot out to the right, I want more room to the right here, so I'm going to extend the canvas out a bit. So I'm going to go to Image, Canvas Size, 
And then uh, I'm going to tick this one because I want to add more room to the right here. I'm going to add, say, a thousand pixels. Okay, and what I might do is I'll select my background layer. I'm going to hit M on the keyboard. I'm going to drag a selection around uh, this area here. And I'll hit Control T to transform that selection. I should be able to just drag this out and the background still look pretty, pretty good. All right, there we go. So now need to load the actions panel. So go to window actions. And it will appear here. Um, go up to the top right hand corner icon, go to load actions. Uh, select pixelated.atn. And there it is there. Um, twirl open the actions. And now you've got all your directions there. So yeah, for this first example, I'm gonna play the right action. Um, but then I'm going to uh, open up another photo and show you what build yourself is. Okay, so and if you want to see how much longer um, the action's got to play back, you just twirl it open and you'll see the scroll bar. You'll notice when I click play, the scroll bar will just go down like this. Okay, so the action will take about three minutes to play back. Um, so I'm just going to yeah, fast forward the video and get to the result and then go through all the layers and show you what they do. Okay, so the action's all done and you can see it's created all the shapes and it's all heading out in the right direction, which is exactly what we want. So uh, I'm going to minimize this, the actions panel, look into the layer panel now. And uh, what I suggest to do with this action and any, any other action um, is with the folder that's already selected pixelated, uh, I want to collapse all these folders because they're all open. So to do that, just hold down Control Alt or Command Option on a Mac and click on that arrow. And now everything is collapsed. Okay, so uh, every time you run this action, you'll get a different variation um, of all these squares, all the positioning will be different. So if you want to go for another variation, you can just shift select these three delete and I've left the brush layer on um, so you can just play the action again but you can move all these parts around manually anyway so I'll show you how to do that uh, the adjustments folder I'll come back to just uh, 20 color options in there and a few adjustment layers to fine tune the look uh, but we'll go inside the pixelated uh, folder actually the first thing we'll talk about is the folder mask on this folder here so if you turn that off hides all the effects um, if you want to brush away any any squares you don't want, you can just use this mask here. Uh, grab a black brush, hit B on the keyboard. Uh, if you hit X on the keyboard, it will reset your swatches and put black um, as the foreground color, so that's what I want. And if I just brush into that mask now, you see that I can raise um, anything. So like for example, these two guys up here, I can just hide that. Um, but I'll show you how we asked to uh, hide um, some effects you don't want. Alright, so we'll go inside and we'll start from the top. So this one here, uh, foreground blurred parts. So these are the ones, uh, every time we run the action, you're going to have uh, some larger ones that appear like they're up further up uh, towards the camera. They're blurred out, they're much bigger. So that's them there. Um, so if you don't want those, you just turn it off, just like that. And again, you can use this layer mask here to just brush black in to that mask with any ones you don't want. So, so if I don't want these guys, you can just brush them away. Okay, um, I'll just move that around. Alright, uh, grid overlays. So if we go inside, if I turn this folder off, you'll notice that if I just zoom in here, actually I'll zoom, zoom right in here. Okay, so if I turn this on and off, you can see what that's doing. It overlays um, different size squares over your subject, but also puts larger squares um, as a subtle texture in the background. Uh, if you go inside this, if you don't want them at all, just turn the folder off. If you go inside, um, you've got this top one here over background. So they're the, the grid lines that sit in the background there. Very low opacity of 3%. You can uh, zoom out. You can turn that up a bit, you can turn it down, it's up to you. Uh, I will just leave that at 3%. And then zoom back in. 
So you got uh, over subject medium and over subject small. So uh, there's the medium ones. There's the small ones. So they just all overlap on top of each other. So yeah, just a subtle effect uh, that's there if you want. All right, next one down uh, is an important one called Reveal Normal Photo. So if anywhere you want to erase um, the particles and have just a normal photo show through, so that's going to be handy particularly for um, faces. So if I just grab this mask and if I brush white to reveal it, I can brush over the face here and you can see how it's removing all the particles. Um, not the legs there. You see that there? But I'll come back to that layer um, and I'll show you how else we can use that. Okay, so these three folders here are all the parts. So if I turn them on, oh, sorry, turn them off. Uh, it's all them there. It's just that top one that was left on, the word particles. So the way these are set up is if you go inside, there's all these different layers and they're all the particles um, on separate layers. So I can grab an S7, I can move that around, um, just like that. So you've got a lot of control over where you want these particles to appear. Um, and a quick way that I like to identify which um, particles like S5 are, if you hold down Control or Command Option on the Mac and just click on that layer, you can see that it uh, puts those marching ants around. So I can just go down the list here and quickly, you know, Control click, see where they are. Uh, what I also like to do is play around with like duplicating them. So if I've identified um, S9 here to be over there. So I might want to make a copy and move it further out. So if I just move my mouse anywhere over the canvas and if I hold down Alt or Option on the Mac and start dragging out to the right, what I've done is I've made a copy. You can see in the layer panel here. So I've got a copy there and you know I can move that out. Um, but it's already looking pretty detailed, so I'll just leave it as is. Uh, okay, so and then you've got the medium parts. So they're a bit bigger. Um, you can also experiment with just having, you know, maybe the small, um, the small and the large parts, so we can just have the medium parts on their own. Same thing again, similar setup, um, all on different layers. You can move them around. Uh, if you want, you could duplicate it. You could scale them up. You can move them out, and you can maybe add a bit of blur into it. So we got a filter blur, Gaussian blur. So you can add that effect, give it a bit of um, depth. And down the bottom here, we've got large parts. So by default, I've turned off most of them. So there's only uh, three that are left on, but you can turn them on and you know push them out. Uh, have that as detailed as you want. So this is um, this layer is an important one. It's called Use Solid Background Color. So watch what happens when I turn this on. So you can see that it's um, replaced our background and it's just put a solid color there. So now you can see all the particles that um, exist, well, what this action has created for us. Uh, and so what I like to do with this is to play around. So I can change the background color. Um, I can then uh, brush on uh, my original photo in areas. So if I go to reveal normal photo and start brushing, you see how I can bring on the normal photo. So you can create like a cool blend between you know areas that um, have just got the normal photo and it looks like it's transitioning into all the particles being broken up. So you can like play around with uh, brushing that on. So Let's use a soft brush here and just like that. And another creative way to use this layer is if you can blend you can blend it with the background, with the original background. So I mean if I brushed, if I grab that mask there and grab a black brush and um, start brushing, just turn the opacity up with my brush. Start brushing, you can see how I can reveal the the normal background. Just like that. So, and another way you can do that is if I just grab, just undo that. If I just grab the gradient tool, hit G on the keyboard, and make sure that's going from black to white, I can drag the gradient onto that mask. 
and you can see that it creates a blend between our background layer to the color that we've just picked here. So you can see that there. So then I can be more creative, I can change this color, have it a bit darker. Um, I'll just brush away I'll brush away some of this around the legs, get more transparent. Uh, a normal photo. Okay, I might just turn off that for a sec. that away a bit. So yeah, just be as creative as you can with these masks to sort of, you know, get your original photo appearing in um, random areas to help with the uh, overall effect. Okay, I will turn that back on. Now, uh, I'll head up into the adjustments layer and talk about what's in here. So what we can do here is we can play around with the overall brightness of your design. You can just adjust these handles here, just like that. Um, you got the overall saturation. You can double click in this layer, play around with the, the saturation. Uh, overall contrast in breaks, I've got opacity. If you if you move your mouse over that word opacity, if you click, hold, and drag to the right, you can increase the opacity of that layer. So you can add a little bit of contrast, but this design is pretty good without it. Um, and then you've got the color options, which are fun to uh, go down the line and turn on and off. So by default, color option one's on. So you can just go down the list here and turn the eye on for that layer to reveal um, different color options. Just like that. So I'm just going to check out a few of these. I just think some of these are pretty good at the top. I might leave that one. And you can also blend more than one together, so you can just keep ticking on the the eye for the layer. Um, and you can lower the opacity of that folder if you only want to use a little bit of that color. Okay. Uh, so what else can we do? So another little thing that I like to play around with is um, if I duplicate. So I'll identify a layer here that I want to use. So S7, if I just duplicate this out, and say I want to uh, make those squares, just zoom in a bit here. Say if I want to make those squares a little bit smaller, but I don't want to just scale them down. Like if I hit Control T and scale them down, it's going to scale them, uh, them all down like that, but I actually want to keep the same height, but just make the squares smaller. So what I can do, if I hold down Control or Command Option to Mac and just click on that layer to select it, and I can go Select, Modify, Contract, and I can contract that maybe three pixels, so you can see that it's shrunk the selection. Now if I just hit this Mask, Add Mask um, option here, you can see that it's masked that out, and now I've got these tiny little dots, so I can move them around, and yeah, add them into the mix. Okay, so now what I want, might want to try and do is, if I grab this, this uh, mask here, I might try to brush on another gradient from the top down. Um, so if I, I might need to change this blend mode to multiple. If I just keep it at normal, Whoops. If I just keep that at normal, then then do that. If you look at the mask, it's actually it's overridden the original uh, mask there. So what you want to do, because I want to add to that mask, so you set this to multiple. So now when I draw a mask, whoops, the top here. You see the mask there, how it's kept the original mask, uh, the gradient from the bottom. Just like that. So uh, I've added, so what that's done is just revealed more of the background layer. Just like that. And now if I change the color, you can see that it's only appearing through the middle there. So 
Now I just want to brush around, play around this a bit more. I might turn off these two grids. Uh, I might turn off this guy. And I might brush away uh, if I use these large parts folder mask and I brush brush those ones away. So that's another way if you don't want, if there's some squares that you don't want, just select the uh, folder mask. And if you want to quickly identify which um, folder it's in, just quickly turn it on and off, like that. So this one here, it's not quite a square, so I'll get rid of that. On the top here. Okay, so now what I want to do is add some text uh, behind all these uh, particles here. So let's just do that now. So if I just hit T on the keyboard, uh, let's get the text out and change that to white. Uh, I'm just going to type out pixelated, just like that. Hit Control T to scale that up, like that. Now the advantage of uh, these actions keeping everything layered is, is that you can uh, move the text around amongst the layers and it sort of sits behind all the elements. So if I move this behind the small parts, all those small parts are then going to sit on top of the text so it already looks like it's um, better integrated into the design. I could go behind medium parts just like that. But then it might be a little bit too much so I could go inside medium parts, drag the text in, and if I just hit if I hold down control and the right square bracket, keep hitting that, it's going to move it up the layer order like that. So I can just keep hitting that until I get something that looks pretty cool. Move that around. Just like that. So that there is just a quick and easy way to integrate text into the design and have all those, uh, all those squares seen on top of it. Now, if you want to export your design with a transparent background, all you need to do is go down the bottom here and turn these two off. So now the background's gone, so you can either import a new background into this design, or you know save this out as a PNG and then drag that on top of another design. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to close this down and demonstrate the, uh, the build yourself action. So let me just close this down. Alright, so I've got the next example open here and uh, I've actually played the action already and nothing has changed but that's um, the reason why I'm going to show you how to use this action. So yeah, all I've done is I brushed over my subject, I click play on the build yourself action. So I'm going to close that, go inside the layer panel, I'm going to collapse all these folders, control alt or command option on a Mac, click on the arrow, collapse them all. If you open it up, nothing's different. Uh, in the layer structure here, uh, but there is one important difference with the, the way this works is that it hasn't moved um, any of the particles anywhere. With these other actions, I've created a default look with them going out to left, right, up, down, or middle. Uh, but this one, you make it yourself. So they're actually still positioned over our subject. So if I go into small parts and like grab one of these, I can start moving these around and place them anywhere I want, just like that. So you can get really creative with where you want to position them. I'm going to side medium parts here. Just like that. Uh, I can go inside large, turn some of these on. Okay, so if I now turn on the use solid background color you can see that you can, you can see all the particles there, uh, and that's pretty much making up the complete photo with all the particles just sitting in position. But if I turn off like a chunk of these layers, you see it starts putting holes into our design. This is where you can get really creative. So I can like turn off a big patch of the small ones. Now it looks like the photo is really broken up into different. Um, zoom in here. You can see all the different sizes. It's uh, pretty cool effect it creates when it looks like it's got holes in it. So that's where you want to whoops, you know, start moving these around a bit more. Like that. And I want to now 
I want to brush in this guy's face again, so I'll select the Reveal Normal Photo mask, grab a white brush, and just brush that on, like that. Um, I could also, you know, maybe brush on his hand, maybe his foot, like that. Um, let's turn off a few more of these. Looking pretty cool. What's this look like with a white background? So I'll change it to white background and I'll work on um, brushing in more on the photo. So, like that. Um, I'll change the opacity of this brush to about 33%. So when I'm brushing, I can just use the square brackets to change the size of the brush. You see that there? Um, so I might just turn some of these back on and you know, move them around. Might blur them out a little bit. Whoops, wrong one. Cancel that. Corrosion blur. I might turn on one of these and I'll zoom out a bit and scale it up. Just like that. I'll blur that again, just a little bit. Turn some of these back on. Blur it out. Alright, I might take a look at some of these colour options. That one's pretty cool. Generally what, what I like to do when I'm scrolling down through all these colour options is I'll just quickly rename ones that I, I like. So just for a reference, I'll just call it anything. So as I keep going down the list, I know um, which one to click back to. Just, so that one's pretty cool. So I'll mark that one, I'll move it above. So I've got those two there. Let's go down the bottom here. That one's pretty cool. So, say for example, I've got those three, and then what I'll do, I'll just flick between those three. Quite like this one. I'll try with that one on as well. I'll just use a little bit of that layer. That's pretty cool. I might just duplicate. I might, sorry, I might just turn on one of these large ones again. I'll zoom out and scale that right up. Look way up towards the camera. I'm just going to blur that, blur that out again. Just like that. All right. Now there's one more thing I want to show you uh, how to do, and that's giving you control over what size these particles are generated at when you're playing the action. Uh, so if you go inside the pixelated action folder here, uh, I'll just go inside right. Uh, so if you yeah go inside any one of these folders and start scrolling down, uh, you'll see these three commands here, mosaic. They're the size uh, of the particles. So this first one's small, medium, then large. So if you want to control uh, the size of those, all you need to do is tick on this box next to them. So what that means, when you play back the action now, it'll stop at that step. So what I'll do, I'll just uh, delete this and I'll demonstrate that. So if I, I've got my brush laid there, it's ready to go. So I will play the action. And it's gonna stop at the mosaic step. So this cloudy texture here uh, is actually the step where it creates those small squares. Uh, so it stops at the first one, which is small. So by default, I've set that cell size to 15. So if you wanna make it even smaller, you can drag that handle down like that. If you wanna make it a bit bigger, you can make, uh, turn it up like that, but just remember that there's still medium and large to go, so you don't really want to set the small to you know really big like that. You want to keep it pretty low, um, just so the effect um, comes off really well. Okay, so that's a little hint to yeah have control um, over those. And after you've clicked OK on that step, when it pops up, it's going to continue down to the next one, then the next one, 
um, and then it's going to play to the end. All right, so that's it. That's how you use the uh, the pixelated Photoshop action. And if you need help with it or um, any tips, just email me and I'll help you out. Um, if not, have fun using it. Thanks.